say here this morning, Sister Beth's not feeling well, keep her in your prayers. Amen. Turn with me in your Bibles to Luke chapter number 18. I'm going to be like Jesus. I'm going to give you my intent before I give you the message. My intent is that we'll bring something that we've been praying for around these altars this morning and we'll pray again. And we'll pray with faith. Amen. We'll be renewed. I'll explain to you more why I said that. Uh, like Jesus, because He gave them what He was going to talk about before He even started. In Luke chapter number 18, the Bible says, And He spake a parable unto them, saying to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Saying there was in a city a judge who feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterwards he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. And, and shall not God avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him, though he bear along with them? I'll tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth. Here it is, Jesus, before He even gives them this parable. Remember, that parable is that, that story that they can relate to. However, it has a deeper spiritual meaning to it that He wants them to understand. And so before He even gets to the parable, He says, Listen, I men are always to pray and not to faint. That's easier said and heard than done. We are always to pray and not to grow weary, uh, uh, to, to give up. Amen. So he told them what it was in a nutshell. I want to encourage you to pray and not give up. How many here, and you don't need to raise your hand, I, I don't want you to because I think it would be unanimous. But how many here would say, Brother Samuel, I, I prayed for something, and I prayed for something, and I prayed for something, but I've not seen the result or the answer to prayer that I yet want to see. Probably every one of us, and so is it that God wants to withhold from us? No, it's not that God wants to withhold from us, but God wants us to be diligent and pray. And we're going to see that from the Word of God this morning. So here it is that there was this judge... The Bible, uh, in this parable, as it talks about prayer, and, and even going beyond prayer, even the authority that we have in prayer, do you realize that you have authority in prayer? Amen. That you can grab hold of the horns of the altar, and you can pray, and you can say, I'm not going to let go of this altar until I see the answer to my prayer. Amen. Every one of us has things that are dear to us that are dear to our families, and we are not going to let go until we see the answer to prayer. And so uh, we can pray with the force of the kingdom of heaven behind us. How many of you would like to have a whole kingdom behind you when you pray? Amen. Amen. Well, you do. You have the kingdom of heaven behind you when you pray. Amen. And we need to pray until the answer comes. And we need to pray until deliverance comes. We need to pray until we see what we are pursuing. That's how we need to pray. And so uh, 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 when we look at prayer, I believe that it is God's will to heal. I believe by the stripes that was placed upon His back that we are healed. I believe that God still heals people who have an affliction in their body. And that it is God's will to heal. And I believe that it's God's will to save. Amen? It's not God's will that any should perish, but that all would come to 
salvation or repentance. Amen. So if you're praying for someone, it is God's will to save them. And I believe that it is God's will for us to have victorious thinking. Amen. That God wants us to be victorious. Do you believe that? Amen. I do. I believe that God wants us to be victorious. I believe that God wants us to experience peace. It is His will. And I believe that it is God's will for us to experience joy. And so with all that said, whether it's healing, whether it's salvation, whether it's victory, whether it's peace, whether it's joy, amen, whatever it is, as we pray, we have the kingdom of heaven behind us and we need to continue to pray until we see an answer to our prayer. I need to tell you that the devil wants you to give up praying. And uh, we talked about this before. Every one of us in here are emotional. Maybe some will think because of a gender or because of personality that others are more emotional. That's fine, but we are all still emotional. And so the devil will try to discourage us, amen, and get our emotions to the place where we think that God can't answer our prayer. What about the emotions of guilt? He can get us loaded down with guilt. He can get us loaded down with condemnation. He can get us loaded down with discouragement. He can affect our emotions that we doubt and that we have unbelief. He can affect us that we're angry, that we're going through what we're going through. It gets our focus off of praying and seeing God working and moving. He can get us being jealous of someone else and their situation. He can get us to the place where we're full of lust, where we're full of hatred, where we're full of wrath and strife. Anything that's against the Spirit of God, if He can get our emotions stirred and riled up, He will do it. You know why? Because He'll get us to stop praying. And therefore, we won't see our prayer answered. And so the devil, he'll get you to drop a, a, a complaining, whining, crying. Amen. He'll get you to the place where you won't want to pursue. But we find that with this parable, with this will, that she had one thing. It was a pursuit to see her a petition that deliver me of my adversary. This person is against me. She goes to the judge. She's one little woman. She doesn't have a husband. She doesn't have money. She doesn't have a lawyer. She is just one little voice, but she makes up her mind that I am going to be determined. Now, most of us are more than just a little voice, but if you feel like you're just a little voice, let me encourage you today that keep letting your little voice go to God because God hears your prayer and don't be persistent. Sometimes we pray one time or we pray and now I'll lay me down to sleep or we pray while we're praying over our meal and we think that's good enough. That is not persistence, my friend. We have to have a made of mind. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So what are some reasons? Let me just share some reasons with you why we may not see answered prayer right away. Now, this may not make you shout, but it should bring you to a reality check that I'm going to keep on praying. The first thing is this. Is sometimes there are demonic influences that hinder us from getting our prayers met. Now, all of you that are hooked on sci-fi, you know, sometimes... You, you, people watch all that sci-fi stuff and they lose the reality that we are in a spiritual warfare. That it is real. That there is good against evil. Everybody knows that. Why do you think Batman and Robin are so popular? Why do you think Marvel is so popular? Because there's a war against good and evil. And you know what? The basis of it is is that it's truth because it's from the Word of God. And so the devil doesn't want to see you having answered prayer. 
And so he's going to hinder you. Remember when Daniel prayed, he prayed. But the Bible says uh, there in Daniel chapter number 20, uh, 10, I believe it is, uh, that the, 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 the prince of, uh, of Persia uh, hindered the prayer. Uh, God heard his prayer on the very first day. But Brother David, the word of God says that it's three weeks later until the answer comes because there was spiritual warfare going on. You may be praying for your loved one. You may be praying for your job. You may be praying for your health. But I want you to know something. The enemy doesn't want you getting your answer prayer. And so he's going to fight against it with everything that is within him. So don't give up. Know that God hears and God is working. But there's spiritual warfare that is going on. You pray for healing and you haven't been healed. Continue to pray because I believe God is still in the healing business. Yes, amen. So sometimes it's that demonic influence is affecting it. And then there are times where everything just has to fit together for God's plan to work out. Not now, but read Acts chapter 16. You'll read about Paul and Silas, and we love the story about them in prison. But do you understand everything? Paul's heart was grieved, the Bible said, for days prior to this prison experience. Brother Craig, he wanted to reach out with the gospel, and it wasn't being of any effect. He was grieved, and finally, Brother Terry, he came across a, 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 a demon-possessed individual, and, and he saw deliverance in that individual, and it seemed like they were making headway, and all of a sudden, uh, the tides turned, and now they're throwing to prison. Yes. And there they are in prison. What are we going to do when our heart is grieved? What are we going to do when we're praying and, and things seem like they're getting worse? You know, we're going to say, listen, I'm not seeing the big picture here. Maybe a few more things need to fit together before God can bring the answer. We know the story all about midnight while they were singing. Uh, the, the prison was shaken and, and the prisoners were loosed and, and, and everything that kept them captive uh, now set them free. And there was the prison guard. He was about to take his life. And Paul and Silas said, no! We're all here. We're all accounted for. It's okay. And then the revival came that they were looking for. Can I tell you, my friend, in your prayer, don't give up. There may be a few more pieces that need to fit into the puzzle before God brings the answer that you're looking for. Amen. Keep praying. And then there are times where in our life that God is trying to purify us and work in our life. And so while you're praying, I love what James says. James says, submit yourself therefore to God. Prayer is more than just giving a petition to God, but it is submitting ourselves to God. Are you listening? Yes. This is a tough part. Where we say, God, I'm submitting every area of my life to you. Yes. Why isn't God working? Why isn't he moving? James says, submit yourself, therefore, to God and resist the devil and he will flee from you. Sometimes we allow the devil to play havoc in our life. Amen. We allow the devices that bring pleasure to us. We hold on to them. When God's saying the whole time, you want to see an answer to prayer, you've got to let go of those things. You've got to submit yourself to me. And the Word of God says, draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh unto you. Part of the process is that as you're praying and petitioning with God, God's saying, wait a second, this is time where we're drawing close to each other. How many of you ever look back at your life and you see an area of your life that was very, very difficult and you prayed and, and the answer didn't come, but then it finally did come and you look back in retrospect and you see where God was drawing you closer to Him. You see, God is working on a level that is far beyond our level as we pray. Let go of the things of the world. Amen. Let go of self. Let go of the things that are bringing you comfort and submit to God. Draw nigh to Him. And the Bible says, cleanse your hands. He 
goes on down to talk about the double-minded. Forget about other resources. Think about God. God is our resource. What are those things that you're praying to? Maybe you're holding on and trying to fix it with one hand and asking God with the other hand. And God says, let go. Trust me. Draw not to me. <coughs> See, we can deceive ourselves by thinking that we can just live in our own same old space, same old area, the way that we always have been. When it's crucial for us to find ourselves in a place of holy living, letting go of worldliness, and saying, God, I'm not looking at what is fair. I'm looking at what you have for me. I'm going to say something. And I want you to think about this. I've said this before. It's been some time ago. God is not looking for your happiness as much as He's looking for your happiness. You may say, well, that doesn't make me happy, Brother Sudo. But does it honor the holiness of God? God's holiness should be revered and honored more than our very own happiness. God, I want to live holy. Sanctify me and purify me through this. It may not be what I want, but God, if it reflects you in your beauty and your holiness, then I set my happiness aside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word that is used here in that word where the judge says weary, it actually means to beat black and blue like someone is training for something. Sometimes I look at Bella and Brimley's legs, we'll give them a bath, and all your parents know, they're like, how in the world does he get all the rules? <laughs> well, they're just busy playing. <laughs> they're working hard. They're training. They're building their little bodies for what's going to be a lifetime ahead. Anyone who's a boxer, as they train, they're going to have some black and blue marks. And training to do something, you know. Uh, and so that's what it is. Uh, but he, he said, she, he, she's wearied me. You see, she was persistent to get to where she wanted. I want to ask you the things that up on your heart today. Are you persistent with them? Are you... Asking God that He is making black and blue marks. I don't want to sound like we're abusing God because God doesn't, doesn't look at it as abuse. God wants to cure our condition. He can handle whatever we need. So I want to ask you this. What are the things that you pray to? And maybe they've not come by the way. Are you going to go back to prayer? Are you going to ask God one more time? The Bible says that this lady because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her lest her continual coming she weary me. I want to tell you you don't weary God with your prayers. He wants to hear. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge says. Listen, if this unjust judge says this, shall not God avenge His own elect, which cry to Him day and night, though He bear long with them? You see, we don't know what the left of why it is, but God is working in the land. Is the enemy stepping in? Or is God aligning all the pieces of your life just right so He can work and move? Or is He working for your holiness? Is He working to draw you closer to Him in the middle of this? I don't know what all the answers are, but I do know this. The Word of God says that He will avenge His own which cry unto Him day and night because He bears along with them. I need to tell you this morning that God loves you child of God and though you prayed and you've not seen the answer God is still working so pray one more time knock on the door come back maybe you say I don't have all the answers I don't have the fancy words I don't have all the power maybe I'm a new Christian God's not looking for 
for that. God's looking for your faithfulness. You're not going to weary him. He will avenge you. Listen, God is looking for faith on the earth. I believe he is coming soon. But God is looking for faith. Would everybody stand all around the sanctuary with me this morning? <coughs> If you're, able, if you're not able to worry about that. With your head bowed and your eye closed. I want you to close your eyes. I'm not going to ask for a raise of hands. I'm just asking you to close your eyes. So that you're not looking at anything that would be a distraction. And you're looking to the depth of your soul. Child God, what are those things that you've prayed for? Maybe you say, I don't see the answer yet, Pastor. I see God's laid this upon my heart for you. What are those things that you've prayed for? And maybe you've sat on the back burner and you've not prayed about it for a while because you've become discouraged by asking. Don't let your weariness of asking be projected on a God who loves you thinking he'll be weary. Because God will not be weary of your asking. But I want you to do this this morning. I want you by faith to come and knock on the door again. I want you to come and ask God, God, here I am one more time, but I'm not giving up. I'm not buying into allowing the devil to touch my emotions and discourage me. But I am believing for God to answer my prayer. And God, if things need to align up in my life differently before I see the answer, then God, I'm trusting you with all the details. But while I wait on you, I will draw nigh to you. I will cleanse my heart. I will make sure I'm not double in, in my mindset, but that my mind is focused completely upon you. Or maybe this morning, it simply is this, that there's an area of your life that just needs the wholeness of God above your own happiness. You just say, God, I choose your wholeness about my happiness. But I need to see you. Now that you thought about that, would you step out of your seat and bring that petition to the altar? And would you give it to God and say, God, here I am. A very righteous God, here I am with my petition. I give it to you. Amen. Would you come in faith knowing that the kingdom of heaven stands behind you? Would you come in faith knowing that God loves you and wants to hear from you? Would you come in faith knowing that that petition though it's been carried on, that God is able to avenge you and meet your needs because men are always to pray.